We're here at PRI 2014 and we're talking to Uber from Electromotive, US manufacturer of aftermarket engine management systems. Uh, while this brand isn't particularly familiar to us from uh, New Zealand and an Australian perspective, it's a very big name in the US market, uh, particularly well known by Tom Nelson. Tom Nelson from Nelson Race Engines. He's been uh, using the Electromotive brand for a long time on his amazing twin turbo build, sort of 2,000 plus horsepower. So you know the product is capable. Now, Uwe, first of all, can you just tell us a little bit about the products you've got here? We've got behind us your uh, Tech S and Tech GT, four cylinder and up to eight cylinder ECUs that have been around for a while. But the yep. one I'm interested in mostly is the Tech Evo, which you're previewing here for release in January. Can you yep. tell us a little bit about that ECU? Well, the uh, the Tech Evo is, uh, is kind of the... Uh, you know, kind of the, the growth or the, the, the future of where the electromotive product is heading. Um, you know, electromotive has always been an ignition focused engine management system and, and of course we're going to maintain the, uh, the ignition uh, technology that we've been kind of well known here in the States for for, for many years. Uh, but the Tech Evo is growing as the mark as, as engines grow, as the engine technology grows, we need to be able to uh, build the hardware into our EFI systems to control modern engines, whether they, you know, whether it be throttle control or cam control or you know, close, more closed loop functionality. Um, and that's what the Tech Evo really brings to the table. It's, it's kind of laying the foundation for, you know, for us to build engine management systems to not only cover all the engines that are coming out today, but even you know, engines that are going to be built down the road. So, um. Now, when you're talking about those more advanced functions, uh, the Electromotive brand has been around since, I think you said, 1984? 84, we built our first uh, distributorless ignition system for the aftermarket, yep. Now, obviously, in that time, engine technology has <laughs> come a long way. So this, uh, this Tech Evo now, you've got the ability to control up to four continuously variable camshafts? That's correct, yep. We have uh, up to four continuously vari variable camshafts. Uh, yeah, th a throttle control driver has been built onto the, uh, into the hardware um, you know, for a potential uh, uh, you know, release of firmware down the road so that we can control various different types of uh, you know, different manufacturers' throttle controls as well. Now let's move back, you said that you've always been an ignition uh, focused company and I just want to investigate that because Electromotive in that respect are quite unique with the way you're controlling the ignition coils. Can you tell us how, how you go about that? Sure, um, you, know, you, know, you know, in layman's terms of course, we, we, I like to refer to it as kind of closed loop dwell control. Electromotive is kind of a pioneer in the distributorless high resolution ignition. Um, you know, we had, a, put, had patents in place in the early 80s on our on our uh, ignition control technologies. And that, of course, has grown over the years just like our fuel injection control has. But one of the fundamental uh, differences about the electromotive product is that um, you know, there is no ne need from the end user to input any kind of dwell, dwell uh, information into the software because the system basically adapts to the ignition coil itself. We, you know, we target a particular ignition charge. Uh, we, we, and then we monitor the the charge events of previous coil charge uh, of, of ign previous ignition events. Sorry, um, and uh, and then adapt the dwell based on rate of acceleration, battery voltage, RPM to make sure that the next coil gets fully charged. So regardless of how fast the engine ramps up or down, the ignition coils are always going to get the same amount of energy. Now just, just to explain that to some of our listeners who may not be exactly familiar with what we were talking about, we're talking about the, the charge time for the coil. So an right. inductive coil takes a certain amount of time to reach full charge. Now if right. you don't give it the correct amount of time, if it's undercharged, underdwelled, you're right. not going to get that full spark energy. Right. Of course, if we overdwell the coil, we risk damaging it from overheating the coil. Right. So this closed loop control, uh, traditionally on most ECUs we have a dwell or a charge table where we have to actually enter dwell well times usually in milliseconds sure. relative to maybe engine RPM and battery voltage. So the Electromotive does all of this automatically with no input from the end user? That's absolutely correct. Yeah, the only input that you need to provide is the amount of timing that you want the system to provide. That's it. 
So what we're getting from the end user's perspective, the advantages here are uh, A, we're not going to end up any risk to damaging that coil right. and B, you're obviously going to guarantee you're getting that full spark energy on every spark event. Yeah, absolutely. The, the one you know, thing I think some ECUs struggle with with inductive ignition is under really hard acceleration, making sure that you have full coil charge all the way through the RPM range so that you can light off those high compression or high boost applications. And um, you know, if you can do that, the inductive ignition has a lot of advantages because of the long spark duration uh, that they provide. Uh, and that's where the, you know, I think the electromotive um, system is, it kind of shines because it really can show what an inductive ignition system is capable of, even under these really radical race applications. Yeah, I think you've touched on something quite important there as well, and the, the, the CDI, uh, the spark event, is very, very short, and, right. and in some instances that can actually cause uh, problems with the fuel air charge not lighting off correctly. Right. absolutely, yeah, I mean what we've seen is, um, you know, it's inside the ignition uh, or inside, inside the combustion chamber you don't necessarily have a, a perfectly uh, a balanced mixture of air and fuel, so if you have a very short spark and you light off, you know, in the wrong you know, at the wrong time, or not the wrong time, but you know, if there's not the right amount of air and fuel in front of the spark plug at that moment, you may risk running uh, misfiring, and you know that might not be noticeable even on a dyno if you're only misfiring one or two or three times out of every hundred. But certainly, that's a two or three percent loss in power that you might be able to salvage if you had a little more time with a with a lit event. So. Now the, uh, the other aspect of that uh, ignition control is the uh, coil drivers are actually built in, they're on board so there's no need for an external ignition driver or igniter module. That's correct, yeah. We have onboard high current drivers that are uh, built into all of our products and uh, you know, providing you use a coil that is capable of handling the rate, the, the amount of coil charge that we're targeting, um, yeah, really all you need to do is provide the coil and, and power to it. Okay, let's uh, just talk a little bit about the CAN bus support, particularly on this Tech Evo. Obviously again with the advances in uh, modern engines, CAN bus has become so important both for communicating with other car systems as well as sending data and receiving data yep. from uh, dash loggers and, and sure. other proprietary products. How are you handling that on the Tech Evo? The, uh, the Tech Evo is going to incorporate two CAN bus, uh, two CAN bus networks. One of them will provide the proprietary electromotive data stream that many of the data logging companies are already accepting. Uh, the second uh, CAN uh, bus on the ECU will be user definable, uh, so this will allow end users to kind of custom tailor the CAN bus to suit maybe a, uh, an application for which uh, support does not already exist. Okay, so again that uh, Tech Evo product, you're, you're debuting it here or, or showcasing it here sure. and it's slated for release uh, January two, 2016? That, uh, 2015. Uh, Sorry, 2015, <laughs> yeah, we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. Uh, yeah, no, for sure, that's that's kind of our target, so we hope to be shipping them in the first quarter of, of, of 15, yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a really interesting product and we look forward to seeing it. Good luck with that launch for January next year. Yeah, thank you very much and uh, yeah, thanks for stopping by. No problem. For online tuning courses, visit learntotune.com.